Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a Wolfenstein 3D FPS clone in Unity and welcome to episode 6. This tutorial we're going to introduce weapons, so we're going to have a gun on the floor that we can pick up, we're going to have a sound effect when we pick it up and we're going to actually hold it in our hand as well. So first things first, in order to do that we're going to need a gun. So I want to create a new folder, call this one objects, and within here I'm going to bring in a gun asset and you can get this on the website head over there downloads and assets the wolfenstein clone and tutorial number six so how do we get this working you know we've brought things in before we can do this that and the other so far but this is an actual asset so how are we going to deal with this easy absolutely easy so let's have the gun in this corner over here so in the gun folder let's take the m9 this one right here drag and drop into unity yes it's huge so let's play with the transform component and scale it down so 0 0.1 0 0.1 0 0.1 and if we double click we can still see it is huge so let's zero out the position bring it to the middle of the scene but now it doesn't look so bad so i'm gonna probably decrease it a little bit more so 0 0.05 let's see how that looks and bring it up rotate on the Z so it kind of lies down on the floor so let's have it as minus 90 and let's rotate on the Y as well give it a little bit of direction probably about there so that is our gun on the floor ready to pick up so that's all good and well how do we have it in our hand as well well to do that what we need to do is create a replica of us holding it so I'm going to take this M9 I'm going to right click and rename and just call this um i'll just call it handgun fake because this one is not the actual gun we're going to use it's just a replica on the floor for us to pick up i'm going to hold control press d to duplicate and then i'm going to zero out the rotation again so it's like that and then i'm going to drag and drop it onto fps controller and then drop it onto first person character so you can see it becomes a child object of this not the first person controller it has to be the first person character next thing we need to do is zero out the position again what that will do is it will center it in the whatever object it is the child of in this case it will center it on our first person character and you can see there we are and if we look at our camera preview we can see it just up above there so let's rename this to say hand just hang on i guess and now what we can do is bring it forward bring it across a little bit and probably rotate on the y just a little bit to kind of face inwards so go back to our first person character we can see how it's going to look that means we have to bring it down out and let's see how that looks probably needs coming down a little bit more it's just a case of working it in there we can see it should look okay now so you can take the time at this point to work your gun i may decrease it just a little bit actually it may still be slightly too big so 0 0.04 0 0.04 bring it forward a little see how that looks okay i think that looks a little bit better so you can imagine now we don't have a gun but this is the gun we want to pick up uh, I've also just noticed there what I'm going to do is turn off shadows for this particular uh, object just for now because it's something we'll deal with later on when we get more into lighting so make sure you're on the handgun and just turn off cast shadows so select there off the reason that happens is because it will make the gun look like it's floating in the shadows with the light causing the shadow so let's turn this off up here now and before we go any further let's bring in a sound effect for picking up that gun so gun pick up drag and drop into our audio effects folder and same with the gun you can head over to the website downloads and assets and get it right there so how do we pick up this gun over here well easy we need to create a script and it's going to work very similarly to how we did the door so first and foremost let's create a trigger object so game object let's go to 3d object and cube place the cube over the weapon it's pretty much so you cover all of it so it's good enough like that 
It can be thin if you want it to, so 0.5. I guess it doesn't really matter too much because we're going to turn off that mesh renderer. Make sure we tick is trigger right there. And now let's write the script to pick it up. So script folder, right click, create. And I'll tell you what we'll do. We will create a new folder within the scripts. And we'll have this folder called weapons. So anything to do with weapons, whether we pick them up, fire them, ammo, things like that, we'll store them in this subfolder just to keep things neat and tidy. So in here, let's right click, create, and C sharp script. And we'll call this handgun pick up. And let's open that up in Visual Studio. <clears throat> so this is going to work a little bit differently. We don't need any animations to actually enable us to pick up the gun. Not like we did with the door, because the door, if we go to the script just up here, we can see that we had to do on trigger enter and then play an animation and start a coroutine. We don't need to go that far into this script. So let's get rid of void start, void update, and all the annotations because we do not need them. And we're going to have, to start off with, three variables. One is going to be the real gun, one is going to be the fake gun, and the other is going to be the sound which plays when we pick it up. So public game object real handgun semicolon public game object fake handgun semicolon and finally public audio source and we'll just call this one handgun pickup sound semicolon so much like the other one as i've said we need to do that on trigger enter so void on trigger enter and I'm sure I've said it before, the reason we have that is because that cube over the gun is the trigger that activates this part of the script. So we can get rid of the word private, it doesn't need to be private. Now we have to think, what do we want this trigger to do? Well, we want it to do literally three things. We want it to get rid of that fake one, give us the real one, and play the sound. So we may as well do it in whatever order we want. It's all going to be done in the same frame. So, real handgun dot set active true semicolon fake handgun dot set active and that's going to be false semicolon obviously because we want it to disappear from the floor so it actually looks like we've picked it up and finally handgun pick up sound and it's right there so we can select it in this little menu that's popped up and hit return rather than type it all out dot play open close bracket semicolon and save and it really is as simple as that to actually get this working so if we head back to unity and we're going to place this handgun pickup script onto the cube but while we're at it let's rename this cube so right click rename and we'll call it handgun pick up trigger so we just need to set those three variables so going up to the top handgun fake is obviously the fake handgun handgun pickup sound we'll do in just a second and the real handgun is the one that we have attached to our first person character so now let's attach that sound effect so if we work with the uh, effects that we've just had and the first door trigger, if you remember, the door slide audio is right here on our first person controller. And what we're going to do is basically duplicate that. So hold control, press D, and we'll have this as handgun pickup. But because we're getting more and more objects with sounds on our first person controller, let's tidy up the hierarchy before we go any further. So I'm going to close up first person character, right click on first person controller, create empty. We'll have this as audio, and then within the audio object, right click and create empty, and we'll call this just simply FX. And then drag and drop, door slide, and handgun pickup into that FX object. So you can see everything is getting a little bit more neater within the hierarchy. 
Last thing we need to do is drag and drop that gun pick up over here. So drag over here and let's save that scene. So now when we press play, we should be able to do what we want. So there we are, no handgun in our hand. We can walk this way and let's go pick it up. Oh, we didn't assign it. <laughs> That's why it didn't play. I did say we were going to do it and I didn't. So yeah, it's just a case of dragging and dropping that over here. So audio source, and let's try that out one more time. Excellent. So I can still see the gun casting shadows, but that doesn't really matter too much right now. We can deal with shadows at a later date, but basically we can see what's going on. It looks a little bit silly. So actually, do you know what? I, th I think we'll actually take the uh, handgun reel and each of these objects within it, we need to turn off shadows. So it's not just the handgun itself that has to be off. It is every object within it because the gun is made up of several objects. That's how different uh, assets work within Unity. So we just have to make sure each one set us off. So the final thing I want to talk about before I actually end this tutorial is I've seen quite a few people have problems with their first person character. For example, we can look all around, no problem. Some people are stuck, they can't seem to look up, they can only look sideways. Generally, this will happen because of the main camera. And you can either at this point delete it or turn it inactive because we're not actually going to use this main camera from here on in. All the rendering is going to be done through our first person character. So I'm just going to delete it and you should be able to get rid of that problem. And so let's save that project and talk about next tutorial. Next tutorial, what we'll do is we will work a little bit with UI. We're going to work on some animation. So we're going to get our gun animating as well. So you can see what's happening here. We're slowly building up what we're creating and aiming for. It's not going to be long now before we actually really expand this world because you'll be amazed at how quickly your game can expand once you've got the basic mechanics in place. So quickly touching on what I said about we're going to do UI next time. UI is basically what you see overlaid on the screen. So for example, your crosshairs, your health, uh, your ammo, all kinds of stuff like that. That's what's classed as UI. It's also referred to as GUI or a HUD. So that's what we're going to do next time. And if you've enjoyed this series so far, guys, please click subscribe, click the bell icon as well. Stay up to date with every tutorial in this series. And if you feel like supporting a good cause, please feel free to check out my Patreon where you'll get things like exclusive content, early access, project files, and tons more stuff. So until the next tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.